You may have heard that there are five giant garbage patches on Earth. They're swirling with basura. Like bottles, small crates, nets, and many tiny specks of plastic. But while these massive collections of trash in the middle of the open ocean get most of the attention, there is another problem. And that one is largely invisible and has spread to basically every corner of the planet. They're called microplastics, and scientists are still working out what their repercussions might be. But they say marine debris is one of the most concerning environmental problems we've got. I'll explain. Let's go back to the garbage patches. There are five of them scattered across the world in very specific locations. Like this one here in the Indian Ocean or over here in the North Atlantic. The most famous is the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. It covers an area of 1.6 million square kilometers between Hawaii and California. That's roughly three times the size of France or twice the size of Texas. But unlike Texas or France, you can't see a garbage patch from space. That's because it does accumulate in the areas, but you know, it's just not the island of trash we've heard about. That's Nancy, the director of NOAA's Marine Debris Program. I called her up to learn more about how garbage patches form and how marine debris affects our planet. The patches are more like a really thin soup. You could be sailing through this area on a boat and not even know you're in it. That invisibility is why trash in the ocean is such a big issue. Scientists say the smaller the plastic gets, the more of a widespread problem it becomes. There are several reasons for that. Size matters. The big stuff like plastic bottles, crates, and fishing nets that are bobbing around in the garbage patches are relatively easy to spot and scoop out of the ocean. But the smaller a piece of plastic is, the harder it is to find and collect. And they can't be easily caught with trolls, like the ones you may have heard about recently sweeping through the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. What begins as one item of plastic trash can turn into many microplastic pieces. Larger items can get broken down by the wind, sunlight, and even the ocean's vibrant life forms. Some of these microplastics are as small as a grain of rice or a strand of hair. Environmental scientists say they found microplastics in even the most remote places on the planet. It's in Arctic ice, it's on the seafloor, it's on our beaches, it's really everywhere we look, it is ubiquitous. Even though scientists know that microplastics are virtually everywhere, they don't know exactly where they're the most concentrated. If we don't know where the plastic is, we also don't know where the harm that plastic is doing. Eric is an oceanographer at Utrecht University in the Netherlands. I called them up to learn more about where the plastic might be found. His lab builds machine learning models of how trash moves across the oceans. One of the reasons that environmental scientists focus on garbage patches is that they're the most visible sliver of the ocean's trash universe. But if you think about the, the harm that the plastic can potentially have on marine life, then it's not so much about how many kilos of plastic there are, it's about how many items of plastic there are. There are many more organisms that can eat a tiny piece of plastic than organisms that can swallow an entire plastic bag or so. Eric told me that the hope is that the models his lab is building will help scientists develop better cleanup plans to target the most vulnerable ecosystems. Another problem, because they're so hard to clean up, the microplastics that do end up in the ocean could stick around for decades, if not longer, potentially causing long-term harm. We started using plastics in the 1950s, so we don't yet know how long plastics take to completely degrade. So then what happens to that tiny piece of plastic is it could be ingested by a fish, it could be ingested by a bird as it's flying by, or it could just continue to stay there. The direct long-term effects of microplastics on more complex animals like birds and humans are still being worked out. According to researchers, studying how tiny specks of plastic may affect human cells has been difficult. Scientists have found turtles with dozens of microplastics in their guts, which they say may potentially affect their survival because the animals end up eating plastic rather than real food. Some data suggests that microplastics can shorten the lifespans of marine microorganisms like zooplankton. They can also affect how well they reproduce. These effects could have outsized repercussions because these tiny creatures make up the basis of the food chain. That can even impact us. Microplastics can move from one part of our planet to others. It's all connected. By some estimates, people may ingest hundreds of microplastics daily through the air we breathe and the salt and water we consume. But if you really look into where the highest concentration of plastic is, it's close to coastlines. It's much closer to where people live and where the rivers actually put the plastic into the ocean. It's super local and we now know of many, many hotspots around cities where plastic concentrations are hundreds of times larger than in the open ocean garbage patch. 
The fact that the highest concentrations of plastic are closer to the coastlines may be depressing, but it also means we can do something about the more than 8 million metric tons that end up in the ocean each year. According to the researchers who came up with that estimate, that's the equivalent of finding five grocery bags full of plastic on every foot of coastline in the 192 countries they studied. By far, the best thing that you can do is actually start cleaning up beaches. Eric says that it's on beaches that much of the plastic tends to go from big to micro through rubbing on the sand and rocks. Eric and Nancy also told me that limiting the amount of disposable items we use and disposing of them correctly could also help protect our oceans and all the creatures that live in them. If you want to catch more videos like this, please don't forget to hit subscribe. And for more of our environmental coverage, I've left some links down below. Espero verlos pronto. Thanks for watching and gracias.